Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing about a metastability. What is metastability? Why do we care about metastability? In the past, we have discussed about uh, synchronizers, synchronizing flip flops, uh, clock domain crossings, and uh, many more things. So, if you have not uh, 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 visited or if you have not watched previous lectures, I would recommend you to do that. Uh, in this lecture, uh, our focus would be mainly to discuss about metastable concepts, uh, why uh, synchronizers suffer uh, from metastability, what is actually metastability. Uh, metastability in, in general is uh, is associated with every uh, bistable uh, synchronous element, latches, flip-flops, and it's an inherent problem in our design. We cannot eliminate it, but we can we can do certainly uh, different things to uh, make our circuits more reliable. So let's talk about uh, what it is. So as you can see here that uh, This is a uh, typical uh, waveform and uh, logic transition we discussed. So let's say if uh, your input transits from high to low or low to high in flops, set up window or let's say whole window of the flop then it is it means that uh, your flip-flop will go or most likely will go into a metastable state so we definitely want to avoid that and uh, we put a lot of timing constraints a um, lot of measures so that we make sure that the data d doesn't change in the setup window or in the whole window. Setup window and whole window are just uh, tiny windows uh, across uh, your clock edge or active clock edge more precisely. Okay. So as I said earlier that uh, metastability is associated with uh, by stable elements. So in the heart of uh, every flip-flop or synchronizer, uh, you would find that somewhere this kind of a structure, back-to-back -back inverters, okay, or some other form to store the data in that structure, whether it's logical zero or logical one. So let's let's dig deeper and let's try to draw a circuit diagram for this structure. So as you can see here, uh, we have drawn a very simple uh, circuit diagram. Uh, you might be able to find this diagram in your textbook. But the objective here is to uh, understand uh, what many textbooks may not describe. All right. So, So what happens that when you apply uh, voltages on gate of the PMOS and NMOS, okay? So what happens here that uh, you have applied voltage zero on the, uh, the, on the first uh, inverter. So what happens that when you apply zero, you are closing the NMOS and you are opening up the PMOS, okay? So the voltage or the electron flow or the current flow, okay? So electrons will move from the VDD to, to the output and think about as the charge accumulated here at the output, okay? It's gonna take some time, let's say, TP, okay? Time, whatever time it takes, uh, we can do spy simulations uh, to get an idea how much it is or in, in a technical term, uh, 
every uh, library element or every cell from the library is characterized for different parameters. Okay. In the same way, if we apply logic one, okay, in this case, uh, inverter second. So what's going to happen here that you are applying one to PMOS and the PMOS is closed and uh, NMOS is open and the all charge which is accumulated here at the output will find a path to the sink or will go to the ground and eventually will make output at zero. Okay, so let's see in a fresh diagram. Okay, now what if we connect these two inverters? So we can connect, make a connection uh, like in this figure. And we would like to measure the output at this node here. Okay. Now, as we said, that is going to take some time for the charge to accumulate at the output node, and then uh, same way charge get uh, sink to the ground. It's going to take some time, which is we said TP or TN. Okay. And we wanna measure uh, the output or the, the, the logical value what this bistable element is storing is from here, this output node. All right. So what that value would be, whether would it be 1, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, we don't know. Okay, this bistable element may be stuck at 0 0.6 for some time until it resolves to the valid logic value or it may oscillate okay um, between two values so definitely this is not a stable circuit okay and this is an unstable behavior so what this logic level 0 0.6 or 0.7 or 0.8 in between uh, valid logic state 1 and 0. Well, in, in simple terms, we can call it a metastable state, means a stable state between 1 and 0. Okay. So now another, another example or another way of thinking uh, this scenario. Think about the water analogy. Okay. At the VDD, you have a uh, water tank. And PMOS and NMOS, you can think of valves. Okay, what are valves? So when, when you apply the voltage zero, logical level zero to PMOS, the valve is on or valve is open and the valve is closed for the NMOS. So the water doesn't go down and water stays here at the, um, at the output of the uh, inverter one. And we may say, okay, it will gonna take some time. And after some time, when the water level reaches, which we can uh, say it's a level reaches, which is equivalent to logical level one. Okay. In the same way, think about uh, if we apply logical level one to the uh, input of, of the second uh, inverter. So PMOS valve close down. So water doesn't flow from the water tank, which is uh, situated at VDD. Water doesn't flow down, but the valve at the NMOS is on or open. So all the water which was accumulated at the output go to, goes to the sink. So this water analogy is very helpful for circuit design, especially analog circuit design when you are dealing with uh, all asynchronous inputs from the external world, how to design a circuit. So remember, the water analogy is very helpful. If you want to be a good circuit designer, always keep this in back of your head, water analogy, okay? So let's go back to, to our back-to-back uh, -back, uh, inverter example. And we were discussing about metastable. Okay, 
So if we try to draw the transfer curve for inverter 1 and inverter 2, um, you will find that there is a state in between where the two transfer curves intersect. Okay. Now these two transfer curves intersect at different levels. Uh, so that is a, uh, we say is a metastable uh, state point. Okay. The voltage um, would be different. It may be 0 0.6 in one scenario, 0 0.7 in one scenario, but it is a stable. It's sort of uh, a, a semi-stable state because it's going to resolve to a valid state either 0 or 1 after some time. Okay. Now every flip-flop, every uh, um, latch suffers to, to the metastable state. However, uh, depending upon the different uh, parameters uh, and device characterization, um, it may be years or it may be hours how frequently the flop uh, gets into metastable state. So we definitely want to um, we definitely want to lower down the probability of failure or the failure rate. Let's say if you design your circuit which is going to operate for 100 years or you may design circuit which is going to operate for 5 years or 6 years. So depending upon that, um, depending upon that, these um, um, you can uh, calculate the uh, failure rate. Failure rate is nothing but when when the flop gets into the metastable state, how frequently it is getting into the metastable state before resolving um, or let's discuss it later. Okay. So, so far it's clear that what uh, what is metastable state every uh, flip-flop latch suffers to that problem. Now, what is the probability that the flop is still in metastable state? Okay, um, your D input changed within the set of window or whole window. Okay, so what what is the probability that it is still there in that metastable state? Did not resolve to a valid state zero or one. What is that probability? Very simple. We can calculate that probability by saying that. The probability of entering into the metastable state, let's say P enter. And what is the probability that uh, uh, the flip flop will enter into the metastable state? And then multiplied uh, this with the probability of still being in the metastable state, which is PBE for say. Okay. Very simple. Now, um, our focus would be uh, now to calculate these these two numbers P enter or PBE okay so to calculate the P enter let's go back to our, our uh, example or drawing again and let's say T clock is the clock period okay and we select a small portion around the clock active clock edge okay whose width is t0 so we say or we can say that uh, our flip flop will go into metastable state if the d input if the d input transits within this window within the window which is uh, whose width is t0 So what is that probability that the D input will, will get a transition within the T0 window? We can simply say it's T0 what, whatever is the width of that uh, window divided by the clock period or the whole um, one cycle. Okay. Or in other words, uh, what is your clock frequency? multiply by this uh, t0 window okay a small window across the clock clock edge 
So that is the probability of entering into mental stable state. Now, second number, PB. Okay. So what happens uh, after the uh, flop enters in metastable stable state? So if we go back to the transistor example, and if we try to analyze the characteristic curve, which uh, in technical terms we call IV characteristic curve of inverter, we find that the transistor is operating in linear reason. And when the transistor is operating in linear reason, initial voltage difference between uh, cross coupled gates will exponentially be amplified. So we can say that uh, the probability of the flop is still being in meta stable state is exp exponential e minus e to the power minus t resolution divided by tau. Now what is t resolution and tau? These are uh, for now let's just say these are two parameters. T re resolution is the time for the flip-flop to resolve to a valid state. Okay? Or we say that within that time frame the flip-flop will resolve to a logical state 0 or logical state 1. And tau is a parameter which is proportional to the inverse gain of the transistor. Now these parameters can be uh, estimated by spy simulation. So if you want to go ahead to a spy simulation and estimate these parameters. Nevertheless, the idea of the lecture is to conceptualize what is the concept behind uh, meta stability? Okay, so if we multiply these two terms, we get the equation for the uh, probability of failure, which is clock period multiplied by t zero multiplied by e to the power minus t resolution divided by tau. Great. What happens? So now here. What happens like if you are frequently changing your D input and let's say the frequency of changing the D input is F data, correct? Then what would be the failure rate? Okay. At which rate uh, your flip-flop will get into metastable state? Because metastable state basically is not 0 or not 1. We cannot really make use of that state. So we say, okay, it's, it's going to get fail. Great. So that uh, failure rate, if we multiplied F data, means the frequency of the uh, at which the data is changing with the failure probability, we get the failure rate. And if we get the failure rate, then MTBF number, which you might have read in textbook, is mean time between failures is nothing but the inverse of the lambda. Okay, And that comes out to be e to the power t resolution divided by tau divided by FT, short for F data, F clock, and T0. Okay. So let's summarize uh, these equations once again. Failure rate, F data, F clock, and multiplied by T0 e to the power minus T resolution divided by tau. Mean time between failures is nothing but 1 over lambda. Now don't confuse here with fd and f data. fd is equal to f data. Okay. Now what happens if your chip has uh, n synchronizers? Okay. So you wanna you would be interested in knowing what would be the mean time between failures for my whole chip. Because even though if one transistor or one transistor or one flip-flop of one latch gets a screw up, it's gonna screw your whole chip. So there is a there is an equation for that, 
is simply 1 divided by summation of all the empty VF numbers for inverse of the all empty VF numbers for all synchronizers in your design. So definitively you want to you wanna minimize the number n. Okay, it's adding up to your uh, total uh, failure number for the whole chip. In other words, you don't want to have so many of uh, uh, synchronizers. So try your best to reduce the number of synchronizers in your design. Change the RTL logic or do something. Okay, so need to be very, uh, very careful. Now another equation is metastability window. Okay, so that is um, a new new term came, uh, which is uh, if we take uh, t zero and exponential of negative tree resolution and divided by tau, tr is nothing but the resolution time. Okay, so that uh, that term we represent it with the delta. And what does it mean? It means that uh, if we wait for resolution time, TR is still my uh, flip flop is not able to resolve to valid logic state. Okay, so how long should I be waiting? Okay, so I mean I can't be waiting for infinite long time. So that TR. Okay, so if I wait for TR and is still flip flop is not able to resolve so that that term is represented by delta we can pictorially see it okay so t0 we selected a bigger window across the clock edge okay and then delta is very small portion and these these curves are basically the the transfer curves uh, i did not plot the whole uh, all spice simulation results, but in the end, um, you can do a spice uh, simulation analysis, and you will find these curves interacting curves. So delta is a very small portion. Means that even though if I wait for till tr, the flop is not able to resolve to a valid state. Okay, so that is a meta stability window. Think about the meta stability window, or uh, think about the t zero is actually the setup and hold time for for the meta stability window. Okay. Now you might be confused with what is the setup and hold time requirement, why it is so. Always remember when we uh, put out a number for setup and hold time, these t0 and delta is very, very small than the whole number. We want to make sure that you know we give enough margin for for the timing. Okay, so whatever is your minimum setup time and minimum hold time, if you sum it together, the T0 and delta would be very, very small numbers. Okay. So what, what are the recommendations? What are the practice? What, what are the uh, notes we can take away from this discussion? Okay. So see TR, which is resolution time, bigger is better. Okay. Why? See, it's coming in the exponential term. So if tr okay, is bigger, then you are basically uh, reducing your failure rate. Then tau, we want to uh, have a smaller tau. Okay. Now this tr and tau it depends on uh, device or the transistor the geometry and various other factors. For in simple terms you can have a bigger uh, resolution time if you have a bigger clock to queue time for the flop. And the clock to queue time for the flop if you make it wider if you have a bigger area for that flop so it will be faster. So if it is faster, your TR would be faster. Means your flop would be able to resolve faster to a valid logic state and zero. See the logical sense there? But you can't have uh, 
that big uh, of a flop that you have too much area. So these synchronizers are special flip-flops which may have bigger area. Very special flip-flops, they may not have all scan logic or um, so the idea of creating those uh, scan flops to make sure that uh, we reduce the, uh, the failure rate. And tau is again uh, dependent upon uh, de device parameters, which is again smaller is better. It's coming in the denominator of um, the exponent. Now f data is nothing but the frequency at which the data is changing. So you don't want to uh, change data too much. If your data is changing too frequently, it is adding to the uh, uh, failure rate. See the equation number one, f data, frequency at which the data is changing gets multiplied with the clock frequency. And nowadays, uh, clock frequency is in gigahertz range. At the same time, if your data is changing uh, fast, too frequently, then it's adding to overall uh, failure rate. Not good. Capital T0 is smaller is better. Similar, number n means how many uh, synchronizers you may want to have in your design. Smaller is better. So these are few few guidelines of few things to keep in mind. Now let's talk some examples how how these number relate and uh, so let's say a typical case one where I have tau 30 picosecond uh, t0 300 picosecond window resolution time tr 850 picosecond clock frequency is 800 megahertz data is changing at a speed of 200 megahertz so what's going to be the mean time between failures is 11.68 hours crazy means within 12 hours your chip is uh, getting into metastable state and it's not working not good very very bad see how the uh, the exponential term is behaving if you put these data and these are typical data which is very common uh, in today's uh, integrated circuits actually this in fact is a bit older um, because nowadays if you take the processor um, ICs they are running in 300 gigahertz range so if you if you put down these numbers on excel file or, or in a calculator you can get a, a you know number which is you know five six hours crazy so you don't definitively you don't want to have data changing too frequently which is an input to synchronizer so that's why remember we said uh, or we discussed in in one of the previous lecture that uh, we would like to pass quite a stable signal across the clock domain crossing we don't want to have any uh, combinatorial logic before synchronizer because it is adding it is prone to glitches and uh, you know we don't know it's adding to our uh, failure rate equation <coughs> now let's take another uh, example and see how the clock frequency does magic so let's say uh, our circuit is failing and uh, in lab uh, our testers oh, we are going nuts we can't uh, test it we don't know what's going on it's it's beyond our logical thinking so what typically we do reduce the clock frequency let's reduce the clock frequency to half okay rest of the parameters same okay so instead of 800 let's put 400 and let's try to do math again Woo! see the mtbf number increased exponentially so the chip gonna fail in 3.3 into 10 to the power 15 years enormous number so the, see the the magic of exponential term that's why we need to be very careful with these numbers uh, typically uh, as a designer 
you don't really get into the details of the calculations you just go to your library team uh, which has characterized uh, different uh, synchronizers uh, in the library and they can advise you to use which cell to use in your design but you need to be uh, able to understand why why it is important meta stability uh, can uh, give you failures which are beyond any logical thinking but these problems are there every flip-flop has it every latch suffers from it we can only do is to uh, increase the uh, mtbf number okay power of exponent so we discussed about meta stability always remember it's a very special problem where most of the conventional theories breaks out and it can produce failures with no logical evidence or no logical proof great so thank you so much guys for uh, listening subscribing